Well, I said I like the cloverleaf aperture and the fiber optics of this Ranger Point Precision Cloverleaf Peep, but that was a couple of weeks ago. What do I think now? Stay tuned and we'll talk. Hi, George here, and welcome to Tales from Target Suite, where I'll share my perspective on guns and shooting, and we'll spend some time at the range. And every now and then, we'll reconvene out in my shop back in Houston, or here at the farm in Louisiana, where I'll build some fun projects, and we'll share an adventure or two that'll make even a grown man smile. Well, one thing for sure, it'll shoot. But did you notice? There's been an addition up here since we met in the grand room when I put this guy on the rifle. And it's the Ranger Point Precision Fiber Optic Front Sight. Ooh, do I feel a shift in the force? <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess it could be because there's a lot of you guys out there that don't like fiber optic sights, especially on a classic lever action rifle. But let me just say, man, there's lots of room in the shooting community for all kinds of shooting disciplines. Some of you guys are going to be traditionalists, and, and uh, some of you guys are going to be into ARs with all your electrified optics. And uh, some of you guys are going to have eyes like mine that have seen more life than most of the young guys have yet to imagine. And they need a little bit of help. And at the end of the day, we're all one big fraternity of men and women who love firearms, and we love to shoot. And so while this guy may not be electrified or optified or traditional, I'm talking about the sight, it just happens to be what's on my Marlin, classic Marlin Model 1894, and we're going to talk about it. You know, the biggest question I got, and it came, wow, that sun is, uh, I'm dancing in and out of the sun, and I apologize. But uh, the big question that came after that video was, uh, what about the five, the, um, cloverleaf aperture itself. Is it useful for ranging? Um, does it help with aiming? And, you know, I had looked out the window with this thing in my hand a hundred times, but I really couldn't answer that question. And so that's kind of here what we're about today. But before we do that, I want to ring up that steel plate down there. It's about 130 yards downrange. And let's just see if the Ranger Point cloverleaf people pick it up. I'm sure it will. And we'll see if he's home. All right, that's, that's the best I've shot on camera in a long time. You know, it's really hard to describe on camera what I see through a side picture. It's almost impossible. So what I've done, it's the best I can do to help you guys see what I'm looking at through the cloverleaf aperture. And so I, I captured a couple of images and I'm gonna pop them up here. And they're in two different backgrounds and there's two different lighting conditions there. And uh, you'll notice that in one, I still had the factory front sight on this rifle when I took that picture. And in the other picture, uh, you can see the, the uh, Ranger Point Precision Cloverleaf peep. I'm sorry, the Ranger Point Precision front, uh, Fiber Optic Front Sight. It's pretty obvious which one is which. And in all fairness, the factory sight, the factory front sight in that one image is a little bit out of, more out of focus than it was when, when I actually um, w took the picture but it's just the limitations of close-up photography like that. And so I apologize, but it'll help you see kind of what I'm looking at. And you'll notice in, in a one image where there's a more direct bright light overhead and the rifle was actually in the shade, the, the fiber optics on the rear were a little bit subdued, but they're still there and you're still able to see them and they function, they function as, a, uh, as a nice reference in addition to what appears to be a round aperture. And so that, to answer the big question, that cloverleaf geometry pretty much washes out and leaves behind a round aperture. Now in the other picture, 
That was taken on a cloudy day. It was actually pretty early in the morning. And those fiber optics, both the, the two in the rear and also the one in the front, man, they were really shining. And I've shot a lot since I took those pictures. And there's some other conditions where the fiber optics are even brighter than that. But those are two good, I'll call them worst case scenarios. Uh, one where the rifle's in the shade and it's very bright light in the background, and the other one where it's a very subdued light, cloudy, no direct sunlight, and uh, actually a little bit early in the morning. But I want to jump in here with just a little bit of transparency. Uh, not that it's needed, but I just want you to know that, uh, that I'm not being compensated by Ranger Point Precision. In fact, the site that I have here is just on loan. And um, this one is on loan also, but uh, because this front ramp is so old, I had to do some adjusting to the fiber optic front sight to get it to fit. And so uh, Ranger Point may not actually want that one back, but I appreciate them letting me uh, take a closer look at this thing and make a little bit of content. So that's kind of the best I can do for showing an aperture sight on camera, but we're going to do a little bit more shooting. I had uh, five out of five on that steel target down there. I, I don't think I've ever hit five out of five before, so you've got to see it first. I'm going to shoot some more. And one of the things I thought about was other kinds of shooting conditions, which I really can't duplicate. Something, for example, like you're in the woods and your uh, quarry is large and dark and has bacon on either side of its uh, belly. And that uh, dark quarry is kind of in a dark background. Are the fiber optics going to help in a scenario like that? And I can just tell you that I wish I had the conditions right now to show you, but I don't. Um, but I do have something, after we shoot this 200-yard target, I do have something that, well, it'll provide a little excitement right here at the end. So, uh, so let me see if I can duplicate my 5 of 5. Probably not a chance. And uh, then I'll get set up with that uh, dark on dark scenario and see if we can hit that. probably a good thing that I was out of bullets because I really jerked that last one. But uh, anyway, let me get set up and we'll reconvene and, um, and we'll shoot that dark on dark. So stick around. What do you think? I don't know. Hey, while our friend there takes very careful aim at that 12-inch bucket lid at 25 yards, let me just say that I really like the Cloverleaf peep sight from Ranger Point Precision, as well as their fiber optic front sight. I just have to give it a pretty good, a pretty hearty thumbs up. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.